Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake with Redefined Horizons and the CLSA Central Valley Chapter. Um, in this video, we are going to work another one of the problems um, in the 2023 uh, February meeting uh, problem set, the practice problems for the CST and LSIT exam. And uh, I'm not going to lie, this problem uh, kicked my butt a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, this is actually my second attempt at this video. Um, so this is question number, uh, this would be question number uh, 21, which asks you to calculate the northing and easting for storm drain, uh, for that storm drain. I'm sorry, it's question number 19, which asks you to calculate the northing and easting for storm drain catch basin number 21. And uh, I, had, I had a hard time with this problem. So I worked on it for about 45 minutes yesterday before I finally figured out how to solve it properly. Uh, part of that's just because I'm rusty. Uh, you know, I've become dependent on my CAD software. I just don't do this in, in an exam setting the, the long way, the hard way. Um, and the other reason is it's been a long, long time since I worked a, worked a calculator with trig functions. So I, I stumbled with that a little bit. But I think I have the solution and I've, I've written out some of the numbers. So what we're going to do, hopefully in this video, is we're going to work this problem. It's a, it's a problem where you have to solve two right triangles and there's, there's a bunch of steps. Uh, but I'm going to try and work all the steps and show you guys all the uh, arithmetic and the, and the trig and the geometry so that you guys can see how to work this. Um, but don't feel bad if you struggle with it. Uh, I, I'm a, I've been a licensed surveyor for over 10 years and, and I, I had a hard time with this. So, so um, if you remember from our problem diagram, we have storm drain manhole 11, storm drain manhole 12, then storm drain manhole 13, and catch basin 21 is kind of set to the left of the alignment and back from uh, storm drain manhole 11. And that is the northing and easting that we need to calculate. So in order to calculate this northing and easting, we have to solve two right triangles. I've drawn the first one here in brown. So this right triangle here, which is is um, uh, parallel or perpendicular to the to the center line alignment, that brown triangle uh, we need to solve so we can get this distance x right. We need that distance x, the distance between the manhole and the storm drain catch basin, because they don't give us that in the problem. We have this northing and easting, and we have this northing and easting. We need that inverse. We need that distance. Okay, we can do that with Pythagorean's theorem. I'll show you how to do that in, in a minute. Okay, once we have that distance x, we then have a right triangle problem here. So you can see that right triangle I've drawn in red. And that right triangle there with the storm drain catch, catch basin at one um, vertex and the, the manhole at, at the other vertex, that right triangle there gives us our change in easting and our change in northing. Once we have that change in easting and change in northing, we can add those values to the northing and easting for the manhole and we can come up with the uh, northing and easting for the storm drain uh, storm drain catch basin. And I actually misspoke. They don't give us the northing and easting for this catch basin. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so two right, two right triangles to solve. This first one, the brown one, we're going to solve to get that distance x, which we need and we don't have. The second right triangle, this red one, we're going to solve to come up with the change in northing and the change in easting between the catch basin and the manhole so that we can calculate the coordinate at the storm drain catch basin. So let me grab my chair here and we're gonna go ahead and do this math. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna solve this first <clears throat> brown right triangle here. Uh, we need to solve for that distance x, the hypotenuse, right? So I'm a big fan of drawing uh, uh, sketches. So let's go ahead and sketch out what we have to draw here, okay? So this is our manhole and this is our catch basin here. Okay, this is a right triangle. Okay, and we, we're trying to solve for this distance x, the hypotenuse. Now, we know this distance here. Okay, this is 20 feet. The, the road's 40 feet wide overall. This distance is 20 feet. Okay, this, sorry, the distance from the center line to the catch basin is 20 feet. But remember, we've got a five foot, five foot uh, gap between the storm drain pipe and the, the center line of the alignment. Okay, so this distance here is actually, um, it's actually gonna be 15 feet, right? So this is 20, this is 15. So if I drew that out, okay, this overall distance here from the center line of the alignment to the face of curb, that's 20 feet. 
okay, which means this distance that we need here for this first right triangle, the brown one, is 15 feet, right? 20 minus 5. And I encourage you to, you know, when you're taking a test, write up these dimensions like this if it helps you. Okay, so this distance here, we're going to call this side A. Okay, and I'm going to do it as a capital letter because I can't write lowercase anymore. That distance is 15 feet. Okay, now we also need to know this distance, right, along parallel to the alignment, center line alignment along the storm drain pipe. Okay, we need to know that because we need two, sol two sides to solve for the missing side X. Okay, now we don't, we don't have that directly, but we can calculate it using the stations, right? So if you look at the stations they give you, so let's just do that. So we're going to just draw a simple table like we did in the other video. Okay, so we've got storm drain manhole 11. Okay, and then we have storm drain catch basin 21. Okay, and I'm going to draw a table here. Okay, and if I can, I'm going to try and get in the station and the northing and the easting here. Okay, so this will be station, northing, easting. Okay, I got a little, a little messy in my, with my handwriting in the other video. I'll try not to do that in this one. Okay, so uh, our manhole 11 is at station 3 plus 5212. Okay, and the northing... The northing there is uh, two, uh, two one nine or nine or five four five point two four. Okay, and then the easting is six three three ten thirty eight point seven zero. Okay, now you you are welcome to watch this sped up. <laughs> if you don't want to wait for me to write all these numbers out. <clears throat> okay, and I actually got those in the wrong spot, so let me grab my eraser. We're just going to change the label here. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. I got that in the wrong spot. Okay, so station, northing, easting. Okay. And we'll call this ID. Okay, so this is actually storm drain manhole 11 here. Okay. Okay. So then we need storm drain catch basin number 21. Okay, now we don't have the northing and easting. That's what we're trying to solve for. But they do give us the station in the table on diagram 1. So that station is 3 plus 30.41. Okay, so you could write that out if you wanted here. This is 3 plus 5212, okay, and this here is 3 plus 30.41. Okay, so if we subtract this station from this station, we get this distance that we need here. We're going to call it distance B. Okay, so if you do that math, uh, what you get is 21.71 feet. Okay, so if you subtract those two stations, you get 21.71 here. Okay, so the difference is 21.71. Okay, so now we have a right triangle that we can solve. Okay, so remember the formula for the right triangle is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, and we're trying to solve for c squared. Okay, so if you do your algebra, remember c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so we need to, to calculate those values, okay, and I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to just erase my sketch for a minute. Okay, and I encourage you if, you, if you, if you're messy or dyslexic, you just write stuff out like this. Okay, so A squared, B squared, and C squared, and C is what we're trying to solve for. Okay, so A squared in this case is going to be uh, 15 squared, right? That's what this side is. This side's 15 Okay, and I actually wrote some of these numbers down so you guys don't have to wait for me to do the calculator. So since I erased our sketch, we can actually put it here. Okay, so remember this side's 15. And this side's 21.71. And we're trying to solve for the missing side. 
Okay, so 15 squared is 225. So A squared is 225.00. Okay, B squared or 21.71 squared is 471. Okay, 471, 32, and I encourage you to do this math in your calculator. Okay, the sum of the squares, which I didn't write on here, I'm sorry. That's what we want here, the sum of those squares. So A squared plus B squared. If you add these two numbers up, you get 69632. Okay, now, if we take the square root of that, we get C. So if you take the square root of 696.32, you get 26... 0.387, okay, which we are going to round to 26.39. So that's x. That's x up here. That's our missing distance. Okay, so we've solved for our first right triangle. Okay, and we know now that x is 26.39 feet. Okay, but that's only half the problem. We have to solve for this other right triangle here, and we can't use Pythagorean's theorem to solve for this triangle. To solve for this triangle, we need to use right triangle trig. So I'm going to show you that, how we're going to do that with the tangent function. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. The nice thing about a video is if you need to, you can rewind it. Okay, so <clears throat> we know this distance. If we know what this angle is right here, this angle, then we can do right triangle trig to figure out the change in easting and the change in northing. Okay, but right now we don't know this angle. Okay, however... We have the coordinate for storm drain manhole 11 and the coordinate for storm drain manhole 12, okay, which means we can figure out, we can figure out what this azimuth is, okay? If we know what this azimuth is, okay, then we know if we draw north on here, okay, then we know what this overall angle is, right? So 360 minus that azimuth gives us that overall angle, okay? And let me check my diagram here so I can remember how, how to do this. Okay. And because we have the three sides of this triangle, we can figure out what this angle is. Okay. So we can figure out what this angle is of this brown triangle here. So we can figure out this. Okay. If we take this overall angle, which is the azimuth, minus the angle of the brown triangle, what we're left with is the angle of the right triangle, the, the red triangle here, I'm sorry, okay? Once we have that, we have this distance now, 2639, and we have this little angle here of the red triangle, we can, now we've got an angle and a distance of a right triangle, we can use our right triangle trig to come up with the change in easting and the change in northing. Okay, so like I told you, this was a, this was a hard problem. Okay, so let's just break it into steps. So I'm gonna sit back down here. The first thing we wanna do is we gotta kick, we gotta figure out what's this azimuth, right? Or what is this, what's this big angle here? Right? We take that overall angle minus the angle for the brown right triangle, and we get the angle that we need for the right, the red right triangle. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got some math written out here that I did. Okay, so you guys can follow the numbers with me. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do now, we actually have to serve solve for a third right triangle here. We gotta solve for this right triangle between manhole 11 and manhole 12. So we need the change in easting here and the change in northing here. Okay, that's gonna give us the angle that we need, okay? So just so you guys know from geometry, this angle here is also this angle here, which is the angle we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's solve this right triangle. Okay, so to do that, we're just gonna write our table out again. Okay, so I've got the ID. Okay, and then we want, um, I don't think we need station on this one, but we need northing and easting. Okay, so this is a storm drain, manhole. I'm gonna do a 12 first because it's gonna make the math easier. Storm drain, manhole, 11. Okay, and then we're gonna write out these northing and easting. So we got two, one, niner, niner. 590.91, that was given to us, 590.91, that was given to us in the table on diagram one. Easting is 633, <coughs> excuse me, my allergy season is starting, 631187.40. Okay, and then for manhole 11, we got 2199er. 
545.24. Okay, and then we've got um, 633, 1038.7. Okay, so we want to just do the subtraction here. 1038.7, sorry. We want to just do the subtraction and get our change in northing and our change in easting. Okay, so change in northing and change in easting. Okay, so our change in northing, if you do that subtraction, you get 45.67. Okay, and then your change in easting, if you do that subtraction, is 148.74. Okay, now. We have two sides of this right triangle here, so I'm going to just draw us a sketch of it up here. So this is this right triangle right here. Okay, it's a right triangle. This is manhole 11 and manhole 12. That's 12. That's 11. Okay, and we just figured out our two sides. So our change in northing right here is 45.67. Okay, and our change in easting here is 148. 0.74. Now, we want to know what is this angle right here. Okay, now we can use trig, right triangle trig to do that. Okay, so if you if you think about this angle here, we have the adjacent side and the opposite side. So that means the trig function that we're going to be working with is tangent, right? So you got to remember Sokotoa, some old horse caught another horse, token on alpha alpha, right? We have the opposite and adjacent side, so we're going to use the tangent function okay okay so what you do is you take tangent is opposite over adjacent okay so you take <clears throat> I'm gonna erase this here okay so tangent is equal to the tangent function is um, you need the opposite side over the adjacent side, okay? So the ratio, the tangent ratio for us is the opposite side, 45.67, divided by 148.74, okay? If you do that math, your ratio that you get is 0 0.30704. Five eight five two, and you got to carry that out to a few places to get this math to work, right. right? Okay, now if you put that into the arctangent function, okay, so this is the ratio we want the angle, so we got to use the arctangent, not the tangent function on your calculator. If you put that into the arctangent function, okay, <clears throat> uh, the the answer that you're going to get back is uh, you're going to get an angle of seventeen minutes. I'm sorry, seventeen degrees four minutes eight seconds, but let me walk you through some of the intermediate steps there. So if you're using a calculator, if you've got a survey calculator, you can just do a tan of this and get straight to the angle. But if you're not using a survey calculator, you're going to have some intermediate steps. So most of the time you need your angle and radians. Okay, so, or I mean your calculator is going to give you your angle and radians. So if you put this in to a regular calculator and run the a tan function, you're going to get this value back in radians. You're going to get 0 0.2979. 08278. Okay, that's great, except we don't work in radians typically. Okay, so what you can do is you take that number times 2 pi, okay, and you get the value in uh, what I call revolutions. Okay, so from, from radians to revolutions is 0 0.04741. Okay, so this is this is the um, ratio. Okay, this is the angle in radians, and this is the angle in revolutions. Okay, but what we want is we want it in uh, degrees, minutes, seconds. So if you convert the, if you multiply this number times 360, you get the the value in decimal degrees. Okay, which is 17.0688. Eight seven oh two. Okay, so that's decimal degrees. Angle in decimal degrees. Okay, then if you convert to degrees, minutes, seconds, which I have other videos that show you how to do that, I'll try and link to those in the description. If you convert to degrees, minutes, seconds, then you get 
17 degrees, 4 minutes, 8 seconds. Okay, so what we just solved there now is we solved for this small angle here, right? Which, if you remember from your geometry, is also this small angle here. Okay. Okay, so now we have this. We have that angle there. Let me just look at my sketch and make sure I'm doing that right. Okay, so we have... We have this angle. Let's see, did I do this right? 17. Okay, yeah. So we, we, we figured out we figured out this angle here. Okay, we figured out. <laughs> I told you this was a hard problem. That's 17 degrees. Let me check my sketch. That 17 degrees is the angle. If you remember from your rules of geometry, we've got we've got two lines that intersect here. This angle is this angle here. Okay. I'm just going to label them. I'm going to call this angle G, G, okay? That's a rule of geometry, right? We've got two parallel lines. This angle is also that angle. These are the same. They're called similar angles, okay? All right, so we know G now. Now, what we want to do what we want though, we don't want G. We want this this smaller angle here. I'm going to call H. We want that angle H. Okay, so if we take this overall angle, okay, which I'll call I, if we take that overall angle, which is the, the angle in the brown right triangle that we had before, AI minus G gives us H. Okay, so we're going to do that same math to come up with that angle I. Okay, we're going to just work that same right triangle problem again. Okay, so this time we're doing it with the brown triangle. Okay, so remember, this is manhole 11, and this is storm drain catch basin 21 here. This is a right triangle. Okay, we know these sides. This is 15, and this is 2639, okay, and this is 2171. Okay, and we want to know what is this angle. Okay, so I'm just going to use these two sides, the adjacent side and the opposite side. We'll just use tangent again. Okay, so tangent equals the opposite side over the adjacent side, opposite over adja adjacent, right, TOA. Okay, so tangent, our tangent ratio is going to be equal to the opposite, 15, over the adjacent, 2171. Okay, and so if you do that math, your ratio is going to be a zero... Point six nine zero nine two six zero zero. Okay, this is the ratio. Okay, you put that into the a tangent function on your calculator. If you have a normal calculator, you're going to get an answer back in radians. Okay, so the angle in radians is zero point six nine zero nine two six. I'm going to write this out so you can follow me if you're on a normal calculator. That's the angle in radians. Okay, angle in radians. Okay, then if you multiply that by 2 pi, you get the angle in revolutions. Okay, so in revolutions, it's 0 0.096227. That's the angle in revolutions. Okay, we can multiply that by 360 degrees and get the angle in decimal degrees. So if you take that and multiply it by decimal degrees, you get or multiplied by 360, the angle in decimal degrees is 34.6416, 0, 0, Okay, that's the angle in decimal degrees. All right. Okay, then if you calculate that, convert that into degrees, minutes, seconds, you get 34 minutes, I'm sorry, 34 degrees, 38 minutes, and 29 seconds. Okay, that's the angle in degrees, minutes, seconds. Now, if you have a survey calculator, you can run your ATAN function on this ratio here. 
and it'll just give you that angle in degrees, minutes, seconds to save you a bunch of steps. Okay, so now we have our two angles. So let's go back, let's draw another sketch here. Remember, we're trying to find this small angle here, h, so we can solve that right triangle, get our change in northing and our change in easting. Okay, so let's draw our two triangles here. Okay. So this is a uh, storm drain manhole 11. All right. And this is catch basin 21. Okay. And remember, we figured out this big angle here. Okay. That's angle I. Okay. We figured that out. That is 34, 38, 29. So that angle is 34 degrees, 38 minutes. 29 seconds. Okay, now, but that's not the angle we need to solve for the northing and easting. I'm going to grab a different color dry erase marker here. We need this right triangle. Okay, which means we need this angle here, which uh, we called angle H above. Okay, to get that, we're going to subtract this angle that we calculated here, angle G. G h okay now we know g g we already figured out okay we used it we used the, the coordinate for manhole 12 and manhole 11 to figure out that angle g that angle is 170408 17 degrees four minutes eight seconds okay so when you take this angle minus this angle to get h so if you write that out, 34 degrees, 38 minutes, 29 seconds, minus 17 degrees, 4 minutes, 8 seconds. Okay, and when you do that math, the angle that you get, my purple's running out, is 173421. 17 degrees, 34 minutes, 21 seconds. That is this small angle H that we need. Okay, now, if you go back, you remember we solved for x. The hypotenuse of this right triangle is 26.39 feet. So now we have another right triangle problem, right? We know this angle, and we know this hypotenuse distance, and we can calculate the change in northing and change in easting. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so you got to remember your trig functions here, right? Okay, so to, to figure out this side here, this is going to be, for this angle, this is the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So remember, Sokotoa, some old horse, caught another horse, token on alfalfa. If Britt watches this, she'll like that. Okay, so we have the, opposite, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. That's cosine. Okay, that's cosine. So we take the tangent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we take the cosine okay, of that angle H, okay, which was 17 degrees, I erased it, but I have it written down, 34 minutes, 21 seconds. If you take the cosine of that times 26.39, the hypotenuse, you're going to get the value of this side here, which is our change in easting. Okay. Okay, so that answer is, I thought I had it here in my list of stuff somewhere. Okay, so if you do that math, the answer you get is 25.15. Okay, that's our change in easting. Now you got to remember we're headed west, so it's going to be a negative. Okay, and if you if you don't have a surveyor's calculator, if you're working with the normal calculator, don't forget you're going to probably have to convert this angle into radians. Okay. All right, now to calculate our change in northing over here, okay, uh, we have this is our angle H that we we have here, right? We know this angle H. We have if we want to solve for this, we got we have the hypotenuse and the opposite side. That's sine. So sine opposite and hypotenuse. Okay, so sine of our angle, 17, 34, 
21. Don't forget to convert to radians if you're using a normal calculator. Okay, times our hypotenuse, 26.39, gives you the change in northing. If you run that math on your calculator, you should get 7.96 feet. Okay, now you got to remember, we're going up in the northing, so that's a positive. Okay, all right, so right triangle, problem using cosine and sine there. Okay, now we have our change in northing and our change in easting. We can do the last step. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll go, we'll go have a beer. If you're a surveyor and you're over 21, you can go have a beer. Otherwise, you got to go have an iced tea. But we've earned it. Okay, so we're going to draw our little table, another little table. So we're going to say storm drain, manhole 11, All right? This is our ID. Okay, this is our northing, and this is our easting. I didn't, I didn't space this out very good, did I? Okay. Okay, so let's write in this northing for manhole 11. 21, niner, niner, 545.24. Okay, the easting is 6, 3, 3, 10, 38, point, 7, 0. All right. Okay, now we have our change in northing and our change in easting that we figured out, right, for this little right, red right triangle here with angle H. So that is uh, our change in northing is plus 7.96, and our change in easting is a minus 25.15. Okay, and I apologize. I apologize, guys, that, that is the last step, and I forgot to do that math. So let me do it real quick. I'm going to do it with you guys. Okay, so if we take uh, 545.24 and we add 7.96... We get 535 or 553.2, okay, and then if we take uh, 1038.70 minus 25.15, because we're going west, we get 1013.55, okay, so our answer Let's go ahead and write the answer out. So the answer for storm drain, catch basin 21. Okay, our northing is going to be 2199 553.20. Okay, and our easting is going to be 6331013.55. Okay. So that's the answer. So you can see that was a that was a three a three major step problem, right? Three we had to solve three right triangles. One of them we could do with Pythagorean's theorem, but then we had to use uh, right uh, we had to use right triangle trigonometry on the other triangles to get the answer. Okay, so that was pretty involved. It took us thirty minutes just to work that on the whiteboard. Now, if you go back to the sample diagram, if you look at question twenty, it's the same exact. As, as same exact problem as question 21. Okay, now that should go quicker because you already have, you already know this angle now, right? You don't have to recalc that. You already figured out basically the azimuth of that center line alignment. Okay, so that'll that'll go a little quicker, but same problem, right? You're going to solve it in exactly the same way with the same steps. Okay, now I, what I'm probably going to do is I'll do a video where I maybe work this, this problem for such storm drain catch basin 22. I, I might just show you how to work that in Excel just because it'd be good for you to learn. You can use Excel as a way to check your answers uh, when you're using your calculator. So I, I may go ahead and do that. And then, um, whew, this was a lot of work, but I'm probably gonna go ahead and do um, uh, question 21 and 22 with you guys in a separate video and maybe question 24 and 25. Those will also probably involve some right triangle trig. Um, and this is this is tough stuff, but if you can work these problems in a reasonable amount of time, uh, you're going to do really good on your CST and your LSAT exams.
Okay, they're tough problems, but they'll, they'll help you guys understand the concepts. If you've, if you've recently taken either uh, of the CST, exam, any of the CST exams or the LSIT, I'd love to get some feedback on if you had any problems that, that involved working a couple right triangles like this. Um, you know, my, my initial thought is if you get to some, a problem like this on the test, you should probably skip it and save it for the end because you can see it takes quite a bit of time and it's easy to make a mistake. Um, but I'd like to hear if, if folks are seeing these kind of questions on the exam, you know, where you have to use Pythagorean theorem or some right, some right triangle trig. And uh, so anyways, thanks for hanging in there, guys. Um, so I'll, I'll probably do two more videos, maybe three. We'll do a, we'll do a video where we use Excel um, to, to, to calculate the answers, and I'll do one or two videos on, on those questions uh, where I'm asking you to calculate either the station or the northing and easting for storm drain outfall number four from that pop problem diagram number one.